Hi, uh, this is Muhammad. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate uh, Azure Application Gateway. Uh, this is uh, very similar to Load Balancer. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, similar type of resources uh, to demonstrate this one. So uh, for the reason I'm going to um, share some image before jumping on the portal. Yeah, I'm going to use one resource group uh, that's uh, like before, like a LBRG, Load Balancing Resource Group. And I'm going to use uh, one VNet that is named VNet1 with IPv4 address space like 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And in that resource VNet, uh, I'm going to use true subnet, subnet1 and subnet2 with Subnet 1 uh, should be 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and subnet 2 should be 10.0.2.0 slash 24. And I'm going to use two virtual machine uh, that is named virtual machine 1 and 2. Uh, so I'm going to use the uh, old virtual machine, uh, which I have uh, used for uh, demonstrating a load balancer. So I'm not going to create again and again this thing again to save some time. And uh, the important thing, I'm going to uh, newly create the subnet 2 and I'll deploy the application gateway inside that subnet 2 and uh, use the uh, uh, public IP for internet uh, uh, traffic uh, from internet and then I'll pass this uh, traffic to uh, virtual machines uh, with the same sort of uh, rules uh, which I have used in load balancing. So Apart from this, it is uh, very similar uh, to um, load balancing, uh, but why you use a, a load a application gateway instead of load balancer, I can say that, uh, for example, if we need uh, some URL to uh, communicate uh, with the uh, uh, these VMs and uh, then in that case uh, only the web services uh, is not enough. In that case uh, we might need to have some database server or file server uh, behind uh, this uh, mm, subnet. Maybe you have uh, uh, some other uh, web application uh, based on Azure uh, in that situation, so we might need to use a uh, load balancer uh, application gateway instead of load balancer. So um, I might come up with some uh, some other case study which is related to real life example, and then uh, demonstrate this uh, why we can use load balancer uh, application gateway and other uh, traffic manager. So um, it will come up in uh, in future. Uh, but for the time being, I am going to use. Uh, I'm going to create uh, application gateway following this diagram. So I'll jump on the portal right now. Um, minimize this one. I minimize this one. I already logged in on the portal. If I go to the resource group, I can show you that I have already had this resource group that is LBRG. And if I go back to the virtual networks, uh, I can show you that I have already had this network that is VNet1. And if I go need to go VNet inside, I can show you that subnet1 already exists. Uh, already created this one before. And I can show you the address of the subnet that is uh, 10.0.1.0 slash 24. So, our resource group, sub, sub uh, virtual network and subnet is already here. So I'm not going to create this again and again. If you need to see how we can create this thing, you can follow up my previous video that's uh, related to the load balancer. You can have, a, uh, you can get the whole idea from there. Now I go back home and uh, I can see that I can show you that I have already 
we have created the virtual machines uh, that is VM1 and VM2. That's also um, you can follow from the previous video of load balancer. So VM1 have the IP uh, that is, uh, this is a public IP and a private IP. Following this uh, diagram, you can see this one. Uh, 10.0.1.24/24, and if I go back, and VM2 uh, have the IP with a similar way. Following this diagram, that 10.1.5, 10.0.1.5. So now I have to create this. Uh, new subnet uh, which is named subnet2 and after that i have to create an application gateway inside that subnet so i'm going to create that thing i go home and uh, find out this uh, virtual network uh, get this virtual network that is on vnet1 go to the vnet1 and go to the subnet there's only one subnet so i need to create another one Click on this one and give this subnet a name that is named sub, subnet2 with IP addressing 10.0.2.0. And then I add this one and save. And I hope it will come up here on this left panel shortly. Yes, it's arrived on this left side. And you can see this uh, now. I go home and I need to create a application gateway. So if it is not in the list, I can find it. Uh, if it's not here, I can write down here. But if I already have it here, like application gateway, so I click on this one. And after clicking on this one, I have to give a name of this application gateway and follow some uh, IP addressing and some rules, regulation type things. So, um, start doing that thing. Now, uh, I'll, yeah. I click on the create button and then uh, give, a name, give a name of this uh, application gateway. Uh, but before I have to choose the resource group that is LBRG application gateway name that should be my app gateway my app gateway it's in the Sweden central region the tire uh, tire I can use the standard of basic uh, or basic already deprecated waf uh, waf version 2 but for the to make it uh, simple, I am standing with the standard version two, and uh, and this uh, region should be the same same region as like uh, resource group and uh, unit that is uh, in it should be Sweden Center, and other things availability zone and other things i'm not uh, doing any changes here and now i have to select this virtual network uh, i have to pick up the virtual network that is vnet one and uh, it should be in the subnet two so I have chosen this uh, proper vnet and subnet. And then uh, next, uh, the front-end rules. When I go to the front-end rules, um, I have to give uh, the front-end IP address uh, name. Uh, if it's the uh, front-end IP address should be public and IP address uh, add a new. If we click here, we might see some IP, but that is for virtual machine. We shouldn't use this. We have to create new one. So click add and give a name of this IP, like uh, add 
gateway, application gateway, front end IP. And uh, I leave this queue and assignment, uh, nothing to do here. Availability zone, uh, I have to do nothing here right now and keep going the next uh to the next uh is backend rules and then backend pool i have to create some backend pool there's the resources to which it should uh, communicate so there's no backend pool so i have to create one i have to click add and i have to give a name like i have been giving the name is uh, a gateway uh, back and pool and this uh, back end pool without target yeah, it should be no and this target type uh, what type of uh, machine and uh, it should uh, give and touch so I pick up this virtual machine I can pick up VMMS or app services if I have something like that uh, like sometimes we might need to use uh, Azure Base, Azure Web Services. In that case, we have to use app services. But for the time being, we're not going for that thing. So I just keep the virtual machine and have to select the which virtual machine I am going to indicating with this virtual machine target type. The target should be right now, first one is a virtual machine 10.0.1.4 that is uh, running on Windows 10 and another one virtual machine and I picking up now this 10.0.1.5 which is uh, like uh, which is uh, Windows Server 2012 uh, generation 2 for the data center so I pick up these two so it will be added here if we are not sure you can see that there is two target. If we can make sure we can go back inside, you can see that this two virtual machine has been added here. So I cancel this one. And then now I go for next uh, configuration. Here, there's a, you have to fix up or create one routing rules uh, for the um, data. So in that case, uh, Click on routing rules, add uh, routing rules. And I have to give a name of these rules. Uh, like uh, app gateway routing. Not routing, routing rule. And I have to pick up the priority. Uh, right now, as we have uh, no more load balancer or traffic or no more extra um, application gateway, uh, I don't need to give any priority uh, concern thing here. Just give one which is the highest priority. But if we have a couple of like this uh, similar type of thing, then we have to uh, prioritize which one get the highest sequence number. So the smaller the number, get the most uh, uh, priority from the queue. So, and the listener name, I have to give the listener name uh, for the IP port and path and uh, for the traffic. So I give a name of the listener like app application GW listener. Let's do and yeah, listener. And it should use a public IP address and a public IP and the protocol should be HTTP and the port should be also 8T. That should be the rules and then now I click on uh, add now I have to give the backend target uh, because uh, backend there are some servers so they have to know how they can communicate with each other 
uh, which way. So I have to give this uh, backend uh, target a name. For backend target, I have to pull first. Uh, first of all, I have to pull the uh, backend target uh, target backend pool. So it will pick up the machines and backend setting. And I have to pick up one setting if there is exist. But if I don't have, then I have to create a new one. Then I click on there and then backend setting name. I have to give a name like app gateway backend setting. And I also give this as, as an HTTP and uh, the port should be 80 and other things uh, don't need to work on these uh, things right now. But just for this uh, information, maybe you can use to need to use cookie uh, in our connection uh, draining sometime. Uh, otherwise, uh, might be we need important thing might be override of the bandwidth override backend path if we have some specific type of landing page of of some of the server of the or the web server in that case uh, we might need to use uh, this one uh, to indicate the uh, landing on the specific page uh, apart from this uh, basic uh, home page or main home page uh, we can jump on the specific page anyway uh, we're not working with this uh, on here right now, but just keep it simple and then add. And this uh, also done. So listener also done, backend target done. So now I have to click add. Our things is almost uh, going to finish. Then click on the next tag. I have nothing to do here with this one. Then create and review. Review and create. I have to pass the validation. Validation has been passed. And then I have to create this one. So start creating this uh, virtual network gateways. Uh, application, application gateway. So it might take a couple of minutes and then we can demonstrate how it looks. Uh, and how it can communicate with the uh, virtual machines um, behind. It might be database server, web server, or any other uh, web, web application server or some other specific port. If we require, then instead of HTTP, a uh, port 80, we can, we can do something else uh, with a specific port. So, uh, we have to wait a few minutes uh, for this uh, demonstrate uh, deployment. But in the meantime, I open another instance of the portal and I start the virtual machines because I stopped the virtual machines before and try to um, start before demonstrating this one. I go to the virtual machines and select this VM1 and VM2, select all and i ask them to start again i would like to start this too so vm1 and vm2 start running vm1 is windows 10 based uh, server and vm2 is windows 12, 2000 uh, based uh, server so it's uh, going to start uh, because we can see the notification because executing start command of two selected items. So I, if I go back to my previous one, this deployment is also ongoing. Uh, sometime it might take a 10, 15 minutes, but sometime it... After a few minutes later, uh, our uh, virtual uh, application gateway is ready to go. So you can go from the home and you can find out this uh, application gateway and I can see this information like my app gateway and I can see the overview I can see there's a IP address front front end IP address that is 20.91.211.112 and 
and we can communicate uh, with uh, this IP address uh, with the virtual machine or database servers, uh, whatever behind. So I copy this one and then um, go to the browser and type and paste and then press it. And let's see which one comes up. Maybe it uh, takes some time. Sometime I open a new window in incognito mode and open the new window incognito mode and test this and see which one comes up. Sometimes it takes a while to come up. I open another browser on Google Chrome and paste it here. Let's see which one comes up. Like Windows Server, that is uh, from Windows Server 2012, uh, shows up some information. Even I communicate uh, here with another one in incognito mode and paste this IP and press it. Let's see which one comes up here. I go back on the age and press again and wait for some feedback from other, other part. I'd like to show you that web server one, that is Windows 10 machine, is also responding. I'd like to show you that one. Let's take it again. Now you can see this web server, web, web server one, that is VM one, uh, which running on Windows 10 also responding. So we can see that uh, both the machines are responding uh, with the request of IP address uh, of application gateway in this way. Uh, we can create and make sure that our application gateway is running and working properly. So this video is up to this stage and thanks for watching.